out there, and I'm not just talking new, new students, brand new students, I don't even know for this, but experience goals. And um, also like to recognize Scott Byers, a credit coach in the, in the hall, and Scott has worked in several schools with, schools with me, so he knows what I'm saying, he's heard this before, he would have great insight as well. But the key is, if I had a dollar for every caller who said to me, oh yeah, I, I know how to site call, and then they start the call, and they write it down ahead of time, which we recommend, but then they can't resolve, and they're going around and around, and finally say, well, what's going on? Um, you wrote it down, and they go, I forgot the look. <laughs> I forgot the look. Has that ever happened to anybody? Does, how, how, show of hands quickly. How many write it down before you start? Okay. That's some of the best callers, and some of them are at this convention, greatest callers in the world, literally, write it down. I see them, I've danced to them, they write it down. There's no shame in writing it down, because as you're going along, and if you're successfully calling and moving dancers, you know, and it comes, you know, the light bulb goes off in your head, it's time to resolve, you look down, and, okay, so you glance down for a minute, and you start thinking, then you look back up. Um, it said to, you know, minimum three squares. Well, for some people in this room, that probably be really hard, you know. Um, three squares might be too much at first, but at least two, if you can. And of course, the easiest time to practice sight calling and re basically resolution is what I'm talking about, is when? Your local club? Your weekly club? How many have a weekly group they call for? Okay, or semi-weekly. If you have a weekly group or semi-weekly or twice a month, whatever, those are the best people to quote practice on. Because why? Because you know them. You know them. You know John and Mary. You know Tom and Sue. You know Bill and Jim. You know whoever. You know them. Okay, so if you know them and if you know their skills, you know, stronger, more stronger, less stronger, whatever, then look where they are in the square. And then that's what I do with my Thursday group. Um, I have never gotten in the habit of writing it down. Have I missed my corner a few times? Yeah, I've missed my corner more than once. But um, I just never gotten it, personally never gotten in the habit of writing it down. At this point in time, I don't feel like I need to, but at some point I probably will. You know, the older we get. But um, I look at certain couples in the square, and uh, I already know that they're the strongest couple. I'll just sight off. I'll just look for that, that man and I'll look for his corner, and that couple, and that's who I can remember. But I look for somebody strong. See, if I know the people, to me it doesn't matter. They, they may not stand out in the square as far as color, clothes, height, whatever other things we look for. But if I know them personally, and know that they're good dancers, that's all I need to know. And I will, I will, write, I will write the game with them. Ed? In terms of writing it down, uh, that's fine. If that's how you can remember the primary, you have to remember the primary and secondary couple. So I don't care whether you're blazing it on the side wall, you've got to remember the primary and secondary couple. What I want is my mind to be a finely tuned machine. So as I'm going along and I see I'm coming up to a corner situation with the primary, I can hit it right away. That builds the excitement. But if I have to say, wait a minute, I gotta look down in the paper, who did I write down on? It kind of takes it away. It takes away the, the, the excitement of it. So I want to be able to cite call without writing it down. If I don't write it down, then my mind says, you better be alert here. You better be highly alert. You better be really alert or you're gonna mess up. And so I train my mind to be in this highly heightened stage so that as I'm cruising along and I see a situation, I can hit it right at the, that moment. That's my philosophy. That's how I want to train my mind. If I always write it down, my mind is going to say, I don't have to remember anything because I know I can look down and look at it. Now, you may not agree with that, and, and that's fine. If, if, uh, if you want to write it down, that's fine. But for the ultimate and sophisticated sight, it's great if you don't have to write it down because then as you're cruising along, you can take whatever, uh, whatever is given to you. Um, then there was another thing you said, what was it? Um, uh, 
<laughs> Should have wrote it there. <laughs> we have a couple comics in the crowd. Isn't that cute? Okay. The um, I have always said, and as I just said, it's important to be able to get to the corner quick. Because that way, when you see a situation, you can hit it right there. If you build the dancers up for success, you can hit them right there. You don't have to wait a long time to figure out who the corner is, and then, then the excitement is lost. So how quick is quick? My rule of thumb has always been 15 seconds. 15 seconds from the time I decide I want to get to an Alaman left until I do it. In other words, if somebody's standing behind me and snaps their fingers, I get 15 seconds to get to the corner. Now, I've always said this, but I decided to test out this theory. A few years ago, Ken was at my, uh, my place uh, calling for, for my uh, club, and we decided to test out this theory. So we had the group, and there were some callers there. We, we said, set up six seats set up six situations for us. We'll leave the room, you set the dancers up however you want to set them up, and then we'll come back and you time us on how long it takes. And have the first two or three be kind of simple things to face lines, facing line, quarter tag, and then the last few be, be a little more sophisticated in terms of formations. So that's what happened. We left the room, they would set up the formation, one of us would come back in with our eyes down to the floor so we couldn't see the square. When they would say go, we would look up, they start timing, we hit it. And then the other caller would come in. And the idea, number one, was to see who would, who would win. <laughs> and the, <laughs> the result was the two silkworms that entered a race finished in a tie. So, so it, went, it was, it was uh, three to three. But the interesting thing was, from basic formations, facing lines, two face lines, waves, uh, quarter tag, the 15 second rule applied. But for sophisticated formations, three and one line, and by the way, our resolution had to be at plus only. We were not to use any advanced, there was an advanced group, we were not to use advanced call. But for three and one lines, an hourglass, and you can set people up in an hourglass without calling an hourglass a plus. For those, it took us longer. It took us between 22 and 25 seconds. So this was interesting. I just thought I'd pass this along, that uh, this has been tested out. For simple stuff, 15 seconds. And for sophisticated, it's OK to go, go a little longer. I thought it was four to two in my favor. I don't remember that. <laughs> but, uh, no, and well, I got to tell you the other part of that quickly is um, some of the students that were there who had been to Ed Ed school and Ed works with them one on one in his basement because he's got a beautiful dance hall down in his house. And he gave them the assignment a couple of weeks beforehand, and they were like kids at a candy store. They couldn't wait to see who they can stump because they also knew me. And, they were, and then, of course, they were out to get Ed as well. So, And uh, it was a lot of fun. I had never done that before, but it was pretty cool to come in and turn around. And it's funny because um, we resolved differently in each of the six sequences, okay? Um, even though I might have, I know in one or two, I might have overlooked something really easy. I went the longer route, and on a couple of them, he went the longer route. But see, if you give a snapshot of a, of a situation in a square, and if we went around the room, we'd probably get about 15 or 20 different, you know, we might get, we might get 12 or 15 different, you know, resolutions. People see things differently. Some, some can do it like this. Some take longer, okay? But it was a lot of fun. It was a great exercise, and uh, it really honed, the, you know, honed your skills. But remember that site resolution, I don't care if you use a basic method or you use something we might show you today, or you just resolve the way you resolve. Um, site resolution is only as good as how you've been calling up until the time and time is resolved. If you're calling stop-go choreography, um, if you're not sure of you know, the term formation management, where does one call end, where does one call begin? 
Um, and it's not just newer callers that have this problem. It's, it's sometimes the middle of the road callers, three, four, five, six years, uh, seven years. Sometimes um, they don't know what to call. Uh, how many times do you feel you're in a rut? If, let's just keep it to mainstream. And, uh, are there calls on the mainstream program, be honest, that you just never use? I know there's a few I might miss once in a while. Everyone else uses them all the time. All right. No, you don't. You and I don't, but everyone else does. That's great. I don't quite believe that, but all right. But anyway, the, the key is your resolution can be outstanding. However, if you're calling up until the resolution isn't, um, it's not a full package, okay? Um, that's the beauty of site calling, is to be able to get up and just call what you want, but be able to, to move the dancers professionally and move them around. And f You know, there's many things we have to think about when we're going to resolve and we're going to call. You know, you have to, you've got to have, keep your, your eye on your hand availability, your timing, your body flow, the choreography. Where does one call end? Where does one call begin? How much time do you give between calls? All that may not sound, what does it have to do with site resolution? Well, to me, it's the whole package. Because if you're site calling, there shouldn't be any interruption on what you're doing. And if your mind goes blank, I tell student callers, I'll say, look, if you don't know what to call next, call spin chain through girls and circulate double. Okay? It's not what you wanted to call, but it may, gives, while they're dancing it, it gives you time. Gloria? Are you going to okay, I got it. I got it. Um, what I wanted to know is, in a tip, which probably would last seven minutes, maybe, a pattern, how often do you resolve? Name? My name is Gloria Vivier from Massachusetts. Thank yeah, you. That's good. Everybody say their name when they're on. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, my preference, and this isn't a rule, this is just my preference, I want to give a lot of carrots. I want to give a lot of rewards. If they've been successful, I want to give them a carrot of a reward. If the square's broken down, I want to get everybody back so they can get going again. So my rule of thumb is every one minute. One minute per sequence. And so in a seven minute dip, I want at least <laughs> seven elements, seven get-ups. But I recognize that there is the philosophy that if the whole floor is going, why bother getting them out? Just let them keep dancing for two or three minutes. I can't disagree with that philosophy, but that's not my philosophy because I want the carrots in there. Uh, and the thing you notice too is, how many have been calling more than five years showing hands? But there's a lot of uh, experience. How many more than 10 years? 15, 20. Okay, so maybe we're preaching to the choir. Maybe you already know all this, maybe you don't. But but our opinion is, my opinion is, that it's almost sort of like in tuned in you after a while. Like, it's, I, I get asked questions, well, how do you know when to resolve? Well, for newer callers, you try to tell them maybe after so many calls, um, you know, maybe after 12 or 15 calls, try to start to look to resolve. But as your experience, as many of you are, I bet you don't even think about it anymore, do you? I bet you just start to resolve when yeah, you see it in the dancers. Well, you can see it in the dancers, but the other thing is you just sort of know after a while. It just sort of, something clicks in your mind, it's time to resolve. I agree with Ed. I don't believe in, there's, there's nothing wrong with the long sequences, but at some point you have to reward them. The, the resolution is the reward for the dancers. It's not so much the reward for you. It's the reward for them. Um, can someone get John the microphone back there? Joe, we hope mom. But if the, the reward is for them, not you as much, because you got to start over again. They want to feel that they have successfully completed. It makes them feel good, doesn't it? John? Uh, you got to push it up. Yeah, push it up. John Marshall from Virginia. Uh, to what you were just saying, Ken, not only is it a reward, but you know, there's a satisfaction to the dancer in knowing they've done something correctly. And that being the result, the, the promenade, the alumni left, the, the at home, any result you use, that tells the dancers we're in the right place, we did the right thing. There's a certain satisfaction in that, such as what happens when the dancer doesn't get something. As a dancer myself, if I don't get right, if I miss something, I want to know why. 
I wonder why I did that wrong. And that's why I don't object to doing things over again. Uh, some of these site powers are so good that you put the answers back in exactly the same footprints they were in the beginning with. And if you're using memory, it's even easier to do that. But uh, I can't tell you that I can always put you back in exactly the same footprints, but I can get the same concept or the same idea to get close to it, uh, and sometimes directly and exactly. But more importantly, they get to see what happens, and the square will function better, particularly when you have the answers who maybe they got through successfully, but maybe they don't know why. Uh, some of us with our queuing abilities can get the answers to do lots of things, but there may not be a lot of gratification to the answer because they don't know how they got there. That's one. Number two, when we're site calling, I mean, get comfortable with it. All these hands are up. A lot of you guys are a lot of experience site calling. That's terrific. But what happens to creative choreography? What happens to make sure you're not in a rut? Because it happens. A lot of long time callers here know that how easy that is to have happen. You're, you know, you're comfortable, you're in your, uh, your rocking chair, you're in just rolling along. So what do you need to do to keep it fresh? I tell the dancers when I, uh, the callers, the caller schools is phrase, short phrase that I've coined, which is you have to write to cite. You need to write material in order to cite call. You're going to see things, you're going to do your writing, you're going to get ideas, you can take them to the floor, even if you don't have a they said, get out using this idea, but maybe you're putting calls together in a little bit different way, different direction, than you have been. And then you can still cite call out, as you've always done, or you can create new get outs with it. But if you write, the more you write, the more things you're going to be able to recreate on the floor from your mind. Um, that doesn't mean you have a, a, a photographic memory, or like the late Mike Jacobs, who had magnetic memory, which is very similar. You can recreate anything you've written. You can go to the floor and recreate it. We all have, if you're a site caller, we all have a little bit of that. Where we can see that's the formation I need to be in, whether it be a diamond or whatever. Uh, I, can, I can create that when and where I want to. So to keep from getting in a rut, I remind everybody, push your checkers. Don't push your computer. Please don't do clueless clicking. Push your checkers. I know it's old school, but that's how you make sure your body flow is good for both sides and you get a better feel for things. But if you're looking for a way to freshen it up, sit down with the checkers, do some writing. Easy way to do what John says, and I do it every dance. I have what I call idea sheets. These are sheets of paper where I just have ideas now. Ideas that I've stolen from any book, research from any place. <laughs> Brian Clark has a, has a session on choreography later at this convention. Listen to that and copy down everything on that panel. No. That will give you all sorts of stuff. No. Write it down on your idea sheet. No, you want it to work. <laughs> <laughs> you want it to work. <laughs> I have idea sheets laying down all the time. That's how I guarantee that they don't go stale. I have more stuff laying down. I maybe have two or three sheets of paper, but there's obviously more stuff on those papers I can ever get through to a whole dance. Another thing I wanted to mention, uh, uh, Ken was mentioning about modules. It's vital that you have get out modules when you site call. You can't remember everything, but you can remember some get out modules. So have get out modules for lines and zero boxes and quarter tags and whatever, but you can't remember them all. So I have sheets of get outs. One sheet's entitled zero box, and I may have 12 things on there. Another sheet is entitled zero lines, and another sheet is entitled zero lines out of sequence. And these are laying here on the table with me, and as I'm cruising along and I say, yeah, I see if I, if I call a pass through trade by slide through, I'm going to have zero lines as I'm calling pass through trade by slide. I'm just glancing down and picking one off the sheet. Picking whatever. Now I don't have to worry about always remembering and getting in a rut for the same get out. I'm glancing down at the sheet and picking it up. And the final thing I want to mention, we were talking about writing down your, your uh, primary and secondary again. If you write down anything in a square dance, don't be calling standing like this and your materials on the table down here because you're going to be going like this, up and down with your head. And every time your head is down, your eyes are off the floor. It affects your timing, and it can affect everything. 
always elevate your notes, even if you're just reading a dance, heaven forbid, but some new callers have to do that. Elevate your notes, put a couple suitcases there, uh, the, the yak stack box, whatever. The rule of thumb is you should be able to stand and never move your head and be able to watch the floor and also watch your notes at the same time. That way you know your material is up. If you have to lower your head at all, it just, uh, it's just going to take away from it. Question in the back. Yep, state your name. Yes, Jerry Gilbert from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Jerry. And through the years, uh, he had brought up, he, he used that term carrot. Get the dancers back to a carrot, to an Alabama left so they can rear back, kick, do the right leg grab, whatever. I've noticed in the last couple of years that a lot of callers, I went to one dance one time a couple of months ago, and every session finished at home. And celebrate, at home, celebrate. Half of them are not doing element lifts anymore. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's a good point. You know, it's been, I mean, the last five to eight, maybe ten years now, I do a lot of at-home resolutions. Um, a couple of reasons. One is um, the dancers are getting older. Uh, and in New England, I can, well, I can speak for other parts of the country where I travel, but if, I don't, I'm sure some of you have seen it. They don't like the promenade that much anymore, do they? Or their promenades are like, you know, one slices across the set, one backs up, one goes around. Uh, my Monday night group, it's like, you know, they can do the hard material, but then when I say promenade, it's like a Chinese fire drill. I don't know, they get over, but they just do it on their own. It's just silly. Um, so I started working on that, and it was sort of a challenge to me. Um, a caller who uh, lives in Florida now sort of said to me, he goes, he challenged me. He said, he says, uh, start working on getting at home resolutions. And you know what? You sort of make a game of it. I, I, I got into the habit of saying, um, maybe say uh, center square through two partner trade and you are and after a while they go home and they you know they like it they get into it so it's sort of a game um, so I'm, I'm all for that um, there are times where I, I have to promenade them I don't say as many right and left grains at the, um, at the programs that I call them out anymore I just don't I, I do and I, you know it's not like I don't call any but I don't call as many as I used to. I really work on that get at home. Anyone here do the, the get at home ones? Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. They really like it. They feel just as much that they've accomplished by getting home than they do um, if they have to do the right and left grammar all the way. Joe, you got a question? I, actually, it's a comment. I do one tip of getting, getting them home. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the night, just uh, out of my left or whatever else, but the one tip in particular, just get home. Who are you, Joe? <laughs> Joe Gonzalez, Clovis, California. Thank you. <laughs> my philosophy is, I, I feel mainstream and plus dancers like the Alaman left, and to some extent they like the right and left grand. Advance and challenge is all in the get at home nowadays. So I still call a lot of Alaman left, right and left grands at mainstream and plus, because that seems to be the excitement for the dance. Yes, you can call be at home and celebrate, and that works. And I'll, I'll do a few at home get outs. But for myself personally, it means for you and plus, the dancers I'm calling for like the excitement of the yellow man left. Scott, uh, yeah. Uh, Scott Byers, Sacramento, California. Um, I actually, I want to make um, two comments. Number one, I do write my sites down, and the reason I write my sites down is it helps me memorize who the sites are. If I write them down, then I, then I know that helps me with my memory to remember them. So I, I do, mine is kind of half and half. I'm not always looking down on that page, but I write it down to help me memorize who they are. And so when I write it down, that gives me a little memory hook. The other thing that uh, I find that's very important is where you set your sights is as important as who you set your sights. Um, you can determine um, the dancers or you can, you can set how hard your dance is going to be by where you set your sights. Um, generally speaking, your better dancers dance up front generally speaking. So if you set your sights as two in the middle of the floor and one up front, 
now you're cursing, you're looking at the whole floor with your head as you're doing it. They think you're watching the entire floor and you're watching three squares. So that's what I do. I think that's just as important. It is, absolutely. And he brings up a good point. Um, how, how many times have you gone to a dance and you've seen a caller? And again, they may be new and it's not being critical in a bad way, but I've seen it enough. Where there are, or maybe they're even experienced. I shouldn't. It's not always just new callers. I see this with all callers. Head square through four, right and left, and they're leaning over the stage and they're, and they're staring right at one square. Has anyone ever seen that when you're dancing on the floor? Well, if you haven't, good. But it happens. And, and you know, to me, if you're going to sight call, even if you've written it down, or even if you know in your squares, maybe there's a square over here, maybe there's one over there, maybe there's one in the back, whoever you feel comfortable with. You should always be looking around, um, calling and making sure because dancers, although they're not staring at you, it's not a performance where they're sitting at, you know, a concert where you're singing and they're just looking at you. They do tend to look up and look at you, don't they? So if we if we're fooling ourselves and we think that the dancers aren't looking at us because they are, so don't fall into that trap. So if you're constantly looking over here, and I know a few callers who do that, and I've had, you know, once been to my school and I say, don't look. I know you're practicing sight calling, I know you're learning to sight call, he says, but you gotta, you gotta make it look like you're calling to the whole floor. People don't want to be ignored. They just don't. So we have to, these are the little things we have to think of all the time. Um, we are going to get a square up, we are going to show you some stuff, so it's not just all lecture. And we have a, one final thing from Ed, then we'll get a square up. I want to mention another key on sight call, on sophisticated sight, is if you know the formulas for citing Dixie Grand. And I say this because Dixie Grand is an exciting call. You can make it exciting with your voice. And the neat thing about Dixie Grand is you are never more than 10 or 12 seconds away from a Dixie Grand get out, no matter where you are in your calling. And the other neat thing is most people don't know the Dixie Grand get outs, unfortunately. They may have one or two sequences that they've written with Dixie Grand and now they've done their Dixie Grand duty for the night and they don't do any more. Dixie Grand will lend excitement to your calling and we will show you that when we have to square up. So let's get a square up if we can. Yeah, can we get a square up? We'll keep talking while we're doing this. So if we, well, we prefer four women if we can get them just so it makes it easier for everybody and then four guys. Um, I know, but just for the... Thank you, Jane. Anyway. I need a girl. So... Not <laughs> bad! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what do we need? One here? We need... We got a lady here coming. Thank you so much. Okay. So, um, I'll just a few quick comments about this, and Ed's going to show you some things, and I'm going to show you some things. So, when you look at this square, Okay, other than asking if we can have four women, just to simplify it, okay? Um, we didn't say for who to dance with who. We didn't say, okay, look, I have a couple in red, that's really great, but I need you, like, right you know, over here or something, you know? So when you look at this square, oh, get back there. So when you look at this square, this is real life. People square up. You don't know how they're going to score up. Every tip's going to be different, okay? There, sometimes there's uh, lots of singles, and they have single rotations, and they have different partners. That, you know, um, you call for different groups, of gay groups and stuff. Everyone has different partners every tip. And it's just wonderful. That's, that's the beauty of it, because each tip is not the same as the one before, okay? I doubt they're going to square up like this the next tip if we were at a dance. They'd be out among the floor with other people. But look at the square that was handed to you. Now, when I look at this square, I don't have to cite on one and four, but I personally would, one being the red couple right here, because A, it's red couple, all right? I Granted, I know there's a guy with a red across from me, and that could be confusing to some people, because remember, it doesn't look confusing right now, does it? Because we're sort of taking a picture of it with our mind. But when we start calling and moving everybody around the square, and you get nervous, or you're starting to resolve, and it's like, oh, which red guy was it? I don't remember. It could have been him, maybe it was him. And you're thinking this as you're trying to resolve, you got a 50-50 chance. Okay, I'm going red, and I'm going Brian and Lonnie, okay, because I know them, and also, even if I didn't know them, 
I'm sorry, honey, I love you, but you're the shortest woman in the square. And she just sticks out in my mind as the shortest woman in the square, and I know if I got red man and short lady, I'm good to go. Now this is a trap because we have, we're gonna use a primary couple here, but we got a red man over here. I understand. You have to, in sophisticated sight, you have to recognize before you start calling that this is a trap, and how are you going to train your mind to know that it's this man the primary and not this man. Actually, he's the biggest man in the square. That's right. Well, so that's how I would remember. He's the largest red person. So, but the so, shortest lady. And it's and it's perfect with the cheese short, it's Ken said as, as the secondary girl. It's, it's perfect. Uh, but how do we, how do we, let's say that she and, and Jane were the same size and didn't have any distinguishing clothes that they were wearing. This is where you have to force yourself and just burn it into your mind that she's a secondary girl. But here we know it's great because she's slightly smaller, so it, it's great. Oh, you're going to show them the uh, Dixie Grant thing? Oh, okay. Yeah. So Dixie Grant, there's... I've been meaning to write a paper on this for a number of years, and I've decided this summer I'm going to write it. There are all sorts of formulas for Dixie Grand. I'm going to give you three formulas for sight calling the Dixie Grand that I want you to memorize. Right now, memorize these three. The rest, other stuff, have written down. You can glance down and pick it up as you're going along. But these are the three that are the key for just being able to sight call Dixie Grand. Okay, let's have the uh, sides. I want to. Stir the bucket twice. Oh, I see. Because I want the primary thing. couple over toward you. Sure. So they can see. Yeah. All right. Sides. Um, sides star through. Okay. And of course, when we're doing walk through, then we're not concerned with body flow. So I'll call zoom. And how many times do we would we hear that combination with the music going? Sides star through and zoom which is a disaster that should never be called because it's a direct reversal body flow for all the sides. So here's our, here's our first setup for Dixie Grant. Write this down. Primary couple in the center, secondary girl behind, not with partner. That's it. Do we need to walk it to a Dixie Grant to see that this works? We'll do it one time. Dixie Grant, go, right, left. Right. Alabama left. Promenade back home. Home. Yeah. Oh, we yeah, have you have a new home. home. <laughs> I always tell the dancers if they get where if they get where home is, they can just put their hand here because home is where. Oh, let's <laughs> let's have the um, uh, head start through and do the zoom, which we can do because we're only walking it. This is also part of this thing I told you to memorize, but it's the flip side of it. It's the corollary. This time it's the secondary couple in the middle, primary man behind, nut with partner. So it's like A and B under this type setup. Okay? All right. Um, let's um, do a zoom. Center's right and left through. Here's the second thing to memorize. Even if you're only calling modules, this is great. Anytime the centers can pass through Alaman left, and we see that, right? Centers can pass through Alaman left. Don't do it. No, 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 no. Don't do it. Don't do it. Anytime the centers can pass through Alaman left, instead call, double pass through, go. Dixie Grand, leaders are right, pull by, everybody left, pull by, everybody right, pull by, and Alaman left. Notice that I raised the inflection of my voice because I thought maybe some of them wouldn't have, it home, wouldn't have experienced it from that setup. And that's the way it should be called the first couple times. But you've done it several times, then all your, your dancers and, or whatever for you have will, will handle that. But that's key. We have numerous times in the dance when centers can pass through Alabama. Let's call double pass through Dixie Grand. 
Yeah, and, and, and if you're calling the plus uh, dance, you know, how many times have we danced and how many times have we heard Zoom square through three? Well, if it's a plus, that Zoom square, the Dixie Grand is the equivalent to a Zoom square through three. Don't You don't need to call it. At mainstream, can't use Dixie Grand, but... Or be, or be called Zoom, if, if, it, if it's going to be Zoom square through three, instead call, do the Zoom, and the center's right and left through. Now you have the setup for the center's pass through, do the, uh, do the double pass through. The third place to memorize, uh, heads back out to the right. No, heads don't do that. Heads star through. Heads California twirl. So the third thing to memorize, it's a zero box. And what we memorize is, Pass through, go, Dixie Grand, right? Left, right, and Alabama left. And of course we have zero box all the time when we're calling. Those are the three to memorize. And if you have them memorized, you'll see that occurring numerous times as you call. That's going to speed up your resolution. It's going to make excitement. And one other thing I'll mention about Dixie Grand that's done in some parts of the country when the caller calls Dixie Grand, he usually cues it right, left, right. Some of the dancers will shout out, right, left, right, as though they're helping the caller. And so I will tell dancers, if they haven't heard this, that this is what's being done now in square dancing. And this is a fun thing that you can do with your group. Tell them to shout out right, left, right every time. And it makes for excitement in the dance, and it just helps the whole thing. Switch. Yeah. Okay, good. Any questions or comments before we move further? We're all good? Okay, we're good. All right, so um, I, I had asked before um, by a show of hands, and I can't remember how many came up, but how many aren't really using, how many aren't really using a method right now, um, or how many are struggling with site resolution? Be honest, I mean, we're not, we don't take names. Sometimes, okay. All right, so for the ones who said they're struggling, are you using a particular method, yes or no? <coughs> Not really. You don't. You don't know any. Oh, sometimes you don't know if you're using a method. Okay. Sounds like shotgun. Yeah. Um, are, is everyone in this room familiar with the methods of site resolution? Because I don't mind going over them because I want to help everybody. All right. I know we got a lot of experienced callers here, and you may walk away with you know. I know all that, but we thank you for your participation here. But you know what? Everyone always picks something up. Um, you we, must have a method. If you don't have a method, you will never proceed. You will always just be spinning your wheels. You must have a method that you can fall back on and really learn. So it's your foundation, like a building. It's your foundation. Okay. So, all right. So I'll show you a very basic method that works. It's the one that um, that we like to teach callers that are wanting to learn site calling. Many of you might have already used it, you don't use it anymore, because what happens is after we master a method or two, and the more we call, the more experience we get, guess what? You, you sort of wean off that method step by step, and you see it. And why do you see it? You see it because you get experience, and you start to see on the fly, well, I don't have to get them into a two-faced line and do all these steps. I mean, all i got to do is say, bend the line, the element left or something. But see, newer callers, and sometimes we get nervous, we may not see it, okay? Let me show you the uh, quick method. Uh, Daddy, give me a call. Start through. Head move. Oh, heads. Thank you. Head start there. Brian, give me a call. Three quarter zoom. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. Double, double pass. Thank you. Oh, why do I ask him anyway? <laughs> Leaders partner trade. All right, good. Leaders partner trade. Give me a call. Touch a quarter. Thanks, Jim. Touch a quarter. Uh, Joe, give me a call. Swing through. All right, swing through. Yeah, yeah that's okay. We'll take it for now. Uh, Steve, give me a call. Scoot back. Scoot back. Good. All right. Uh, let's see. Ed, give us a call. Split circulate. Okay. Okay, so stop. All right, now we want to, I'm going to show you quickly the two-faced line method. We're doing an extemporaneous call. And what we're doing is everybody's call. You're, picture that being one caller, but everyone gets a call. Let's tell the CD people where the square is. Um, yeah, right now we have parallel right-handed ocean waves with the boys in the middle. So what I want to do is, if I use the two-faced line method, again, it's, a, it's amazing how many times somebody says, I really want to learn a site calling method, 
and you teach them the two phase slide, and the first time they get up there, they get you into like ocean waves and they try to resolve. We said, no, it's called the two phase slide method because you resolve starting from. Thank you, you're so good. Oh, well, I know that, but I'm showing other people. So, the first thing is we get them in a two-phase line. Boys run. Now, I want my primary couple matched together. And keeping them within the two-phase line, that's the key. If you start to say, bend the line, ladies chin, yeah, you might be able to match them up. I'm sure you will. But, if we're sticking to a method that people could use, stick to the method. So, any combinations of circulates or trades will bring the ladies, the primary couple, together. Now, Michael, what is it? Oh. I want her with him. Centers circulate. Centers circulate how many times? Twice. Girls circulate. circulate. What are they saying? Okay. Now, here's the deal. I, I wanted my primary couple together. Did I get them together? But who, but the key is now you want the secondary lady in the same line as your primary couple without breaking up the primary couple. So by keeping them together, Jane, how can I do that? Yeah. Couple circulate. Thank you. I knew you knew the answer. Couple circulate. Okay, from here, I want, I've got my primary couple, I got my secondary lady. I don't care about the secondary man, nothing personal, Brian. <laughs> But I don't need him in the line. If he's in the line, great. If he's not in the line, it doesn't matter. I got who I want. The next call is an automatic wheel and deal. Wheel and deal. I want my primary couple on the outside. Are they there? Yes. If for some reason they weren't there, I would call a right and left through to put them there. I don't have to. I know that have followed all the steps the dancers have done what they should do. I know that my number one man is looking at his corner. And there's only two scenarios that can exist. He will be looking at his corner. She either has her partner or she does not have her partner. Does she have her partner next to her? So that means we're in a corner box. Everyone's looking at their corner. So you could say, fine, don't do it. Jane, will you switch right here with money? Thank you. Okay. No, I didn't want to change that. I wanted to change the, the mask. Thank you. Thank you very much. How confusing that is. Thank you. All right. I changed the men. So where I said she either has her partner or she doesn't. The first case, she didn't have her partner. So we were in a corner box because her partner was behind her. It's the same thing as saying head step in a fish corner or sides. She has her partner. So the get out from here means everybody has their partner. Swing through. You can do a turn through to a left element, or you can get kind of done a swing through right and left. Right. Okay, promenade home or back. Push your partner home. Everyone see that? That is a basic method. And if for some reason somebody in this room is not using a method, I highly recommend you at least start with that one, provided you follow the steps. Right, Ed? All right. For more sophisticated methods. I have something, and Scott has seen this. I just gave it a name. It's not a famous name. It's just a name I made up. I call it a snapshot. So I want to start site calling. Okay? Give me a call. Uh, four ladies chain three quarters. Four ladies chain three quarters. All right, let's see. Give me a call. Hey. Head square through four. Thank you. Head square through four. Mike, when they're there. Right and left through. Give me a call. Veer to the left. Veer to the left. Good. That's very nice you did the right and left through first before the veer to the left. Center's hand. Center's hand. Ooh. Okay. So we got a diamond. Okay. Uh, all right. So from here, boys face in, girls extend to the boys. All right. So I've called everything I want to call. And this is what I mean when I said earlier that things start to morph into it. And I'm sure many of you are doing this. Maybe We don't know why we do it. We just do it because we get experienced and we start to see things clearly. So at this point, I've called everything I want to call. Now I want to bring them home. So I quickly look at the square, and I can divide the square in four ways. I can divide it this way. I can divide it this way. So I've got, hold on, this way, this side, 
this way, this side, or I can divide it also. This way, these four, this way, these four. I can break it down by waves, or I can break it down by boxes within the wave. Everybody in the square, remember this footprint, because when he's done, I want you to come right back to this footprint. Okay. Again. So what I want to do is, if I pick a group of four, out of those four, there's usually a 90% chance, or it could be higher, it could be lower, but it's usually a good chance that I can quickly match up two couples. Then I'm halfway home. So if I have, from here, if I want to start the resolve, I know I can have the girls do a U-turn back, but um, we'll do something a little bit smoother. Scoot back. I've done that too. There's a lot of different ones. Boys run around the girl. Okay, my resolution is this. Pass through, wheel and deal. In the middle, wheel around. Now the man left, and I'm home. Oh, oh right, wait, did I? Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, let me see. Oh, I got the secondary man. I don't it's want important to have a method. Okay. <laughs> right and left through. Fear to the left, sorry, wrong guy in red. Ferris wheel, watch that. Um, well, now we really got to do the center star through, back out. Those in head's position lead to the right. And left. All right, get back where you were. You can remember that. Back to your footprint. I could have picked another segment. That's the one I picked. So some people ask, what is your thought process as you're going through psych calming? What, and, and I'm from right here, here's my thought process when he had him here. The first thing I look for is the sec is the primary couple. And I see the primary girls diagonally across. I know that automatically means the primary man has his opposite. Therefore, if I call it all eight circulate, that will bring the primary Who's couple together. There you go. At the same time, so I will call the all eight circulate. But as I'm calling the all eight circulate, I look at the secondary girl and see what's happening with her and Brian. I'm, I'm not looking at all of them at the same time. I'm only keying on the primary couple. But I see that isn't it neat when I get the primary couple together, the all eight circulate is going to get the secondary couple together. Well, that's great. They're all together. But then I want my get out. But I can be thinking of my get out as everybody's moving. All eight circulate. Everybody cast off three quarters and rear back and do a right and left grind. And that's what I that went, went, went through my mind from that setup. And my point being, yes, I did get the right corner that time, but it was the only thing. But I guarantee you, when we're all calling, all of us wouldn't have said all eight circulate. I'd bet the bottom dollar on that, okay? I didn't say it from there. So, Jim, I want you to mix them up. Hold on, can we go back to that same position? Sure, go ahead. Go back can you remember your same it. position? We're getting, for the tape, we're getting you back in the same position. This okay. will be a Brian get out. Everybody okay, so write this down. So Brian Clark from Vancouver, BC. Everybody. I'm not going to do five eights or something. No, no, no. no. <laughs> so, so, of course, the first thing I, I saw was exactly the same thing you saw. Everybody had their opposite. And, and then what I also saw was that we are not in sequence. Okay, so everybody hinge. The centers trade. Recycle. Right and left grand. On the third hand. From an Okay. So that's what I saw when I saw that. Um, so there, I don't know, there's no technique. Can you get back to where you were again one more time? Okay, so this is fun because this we all see things differently, don't we? We do. I didn't I was not looking for that. What I was looking for in my group of four that I chose was my choice. Like I said, I could have gone four ways. I saw that Brian and his uh, your partner is Oh, the one to one. Okay. The little one. Okay. Well, okay, scrap them all. Let's do it again. Jim, I want you to mix them up. Okay, head square through four. Right and left through. Beer left. Girls trade. Couples circulate. Bend the line. Pass the ocean. Single hinge, center's trade. Okay, so he mixed them up really good. We've got, for the sake of the tape, we got 
right-handed parallel waves, girl, girl, boy, boy, or boy, boy, girl, girl, depending on how you're looking at it. Okay, so again, when I look at a square, and I, he's called as much as he wanted to call. If it was me, I've called as much as I want to call. Basically, what I want to do now is I want to resolve out of this somehow with someone. I can, again, I can go here, I can go here, I can go here, and go here. However, the key thing is right now, what do you notice about the arrangement uh, within the formation? Boy, boy, girl, girl. Right. Okay, so, and many times though, when callers start to resolve, they don't see arrangement, they just see formation. They quickly say, oh, I got two parallel right-handed waves. And they may want to say, you know, girls run around the boy. Well, in this case, we can't do it. But I've heard that called, and I'm sure some of us have even called that. All right, so from here, we want to resolve from here. Let's have the centers trade, scoot back, all the boys run around the girl. I'm getting closer because that's how I decided to move this. Slide through, pass the center, and square through three. That's the way I chose for that particular sequence to Alaman left and push your partner home. And you're home. Ed? Let me show you one other, other type thing here. Head, heads, um, uh, Heads back out to the right, make a line of four. Just back up to the right, make a line. <laughs> we know that if we call, so let's, let's say I'm ready to do my resolve. We know that a square through four means we turn our back on our partner, right? So therefore, if a square through four means we turn our back on our partner, then after the four, if we turn around, we'll be facing our partner, we can do a right left frame. And that's just a little get out module. So I'm going to call this, but I'm going to call it two ways. First, I will call it the average way that a lot of callers might call it. So everybody square through four, go. You turn back and right and left grand, don't do it. Okay. Now, star through, California twirl. The fact that we have neat get outs, and, and this is, I only call this neat because a lot of people don't do it. That just kind of fell off the end of the table when I called it. There was no excitement there. So now I'm going to call it the way I would call it at the dance. Everybody square through four, go. Four hands. When you're done, turn around, right and left grand. And I say turn around. I don't say you turn back. Turn, don't have to do it. The turn around is an excitement. It's, yeah, and, and it's right there. That's how I would call it at a dance. And the key is don't lose presentation merely for the fact that you know how to resolve. All right, square back up. And one thing about what Brian did, Brian did a really nice get out, didn't he? But we have to remember who we're calling to in our audience. Uh, sometimes, you know, I'm just talking about maybe the, you know, the basic mainstream club or even a, a plus club. I don't know, you know your own groups better. But if you don't have a strong floor, many times uh, the girl recycling the boy around might cause problems. And why do you think that is? Because nobody calls us. We don't teach it. We don't call it in our classes. We don't use it. So all of a sudden, girl isn't used to doing the cross fold and the boy fold and following and leading. Okay? It's, they're not used to it. So if you see it and you think your dancers can't use it, then it might be a great get out, but it might not work. Then what's going to happen? It's going to fall flat on your face. Ed? Hey, can we trade mics? Sure. <laughs> We've been talking about get outs and resolves, but as we know, 90 to 95 percent of cyclone is what becomes be comes before the resolve. We're talking sophisticated cycle. So let's take a look at this. Let's have the heads start through. Everybody do a do a double pass through. Put centers in, cast off three quarters, pass through, wheel and deal, girls pass through. The title of this little thing is called The Value of Centers Trade. If I call star through from here, and a lot of callers would because it's going to give us a nice two-faced line, boys and girls <laughs> together, right, no problem. And so the whole world will tend to call star through couples circulate. 
And no problem, you got a two-faced line, nice, everybody's going to do the circulate. But calling the call through, the combination of star through couple circulate is going to be awkward for two people. And by the way, for the CD, we have girls in the middle facing boys on the outside. It's going to be awkward for the outside right-hand man. Ryan? Scott. Scott. Yes, sir. Uh, why? Because, look what happened. Watch Brian, because he's closest to you. We're going to do the star through. Go ahead, do the star through. And watch how, notice he's turning to his right. Any call I call now is awkward for him. If I call couple circulate, he has to come back to the left. If I call Ferris wheel, he has to come back to the left. If I call wheel and deal, he has to come back to the left. So it's awkward for, it's also awkward for Scott. The other six, no problem. The other six, so go back, unrun. The new call, unrun. Or un, you know, un star through, yes. Yeah. <laughs> star through. Okay, so this whole idea was first put forth by Jack Lazary numerous years ago. Unfortunately, it isn't written down, but sophisticated callers know this. After the star through and before whatever the next call is, insert a center's trade. That smooths every that smooths out whatever the next call is. And why is that? Because it lowers the center of gravity. The star through, your hand is up here, your center of gravity is raised. When you call the star through, it lowers the center of gravity, and that makes the next call smooth, right? But the center's trade gives me the exact same path as if I did the circulate that you said was bad flow. And that's good. He said that comment because I knew he was going to say that comment. And I <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, he's right if I call star through pause, couple circulate or whatever. But if I call, but we know we don't call stop start calling, we lead the dancers by two beats. So if I call star through and immediately call center's trade, then he's walking toward the other man and the center's trade is done smooth. But he's right, if I just call star through, stop, center's trade, it's not gonna be through. Do a star through, go, boys trade. See, I said boys trade before they hardly even walked into the star through. And now whatever the next call is, is good. Uh, bend the line, pass through, wheel and deal, and spread. Pass through, wheel and deal, zoom. Boys pass through, so we now have a starting, we have, a, we have an eight chain through, boys in the middle, girls on the outside. Same thing is true for the girls. If I call star through, where's the, where's the problem, going to, which girl is going to have the problem? It's going to be the outside left hand girl, because her body motion is going to the left. Anything that is going to go to the, the other way, I'll get you to sex it up. Start through girls' trade. Go. And now we can do whatever we want to do. It's timing as well. Question in the back. <coughs> My first instinct to see that, but to smooth it out, would be a touch of quarter boys or girls' trade. Me too. And then move from there. From the boys in the middle looking at girls or girls in the middle of looking at boys to eliminate everything that you've just done. It just seems smoother to me. Yeah. Um, bend the line, pass through, wheel and deal and spread. Let's do what she just said. Um, pass through, wheel and deal. Girls pass through. <clears throat> so you want touch a quarter. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing. Touch a quarter, go ahead, and the center's trade. Let's have the boys run around a girl and the couple circulate. Then they um, bend the line, past the ocean. Girls trade. So that's one spot where the center's trade is vital. Same sex eight chain through, and we call a star through, we want to insert a center's trade. The other key spot is anytime you call from parallel waves, ends run. It's going to be the same thing. Here, we have, and now we have normal parallel waves, girls in the middle, boys on the end. The key boy is the boy looking in, because when he runs, his body flow is to the right. 
any call we call, couple circulate or whatever, is going to be offered for him unless we insert a center's trade. Boys run, girls tr boys trade, and bend the line. There are all sorts of places where this applies subtly. Let's look at this call. Let's what well, we have normal facing lines. Let's look at the let's look at any girl. Past the ocean. And so all the girl's body motion is toward the left to the center. And the whole world would now call swing through, right? But what happens on a swing through? The girl has to come back to the right. So the combination of past the ocean, swing through, which the whole world calls, doesn't feel that great for the girls. Feels great for the guys. And of course, that's a problem since most callers are guys. They say, well, if it's great for the guys, it must be great for the girls. I don't worry about the girls. Well, that's the problem. So what do we do? Do a recycle. So we're going to get out of this. Star through. So how do we smooth this out? We, we call before the swing through. After the pass the ocean, before the swing through, we're going to insert a girl's trade, and that'll make it smooth. Now we don't say pass the ocean, pause, girl's trade. We blend the whole thing together. I'm going to say girl's trade before they ever touch on the, on the hands on the pass the ocean. Pass the ocean, girl's trade. <laughs> uh, don't worry about their <laughs> Uh, okay, recycle, star through. So what's the end, re end objective here? Anytime you are in doubt of smoothness, insert a center's trade. Now that only applies to waves and two-face lines. It doesn't apply to lines facing out or facing in. But anytime you are in doubt, insert a center's trade. What will that do for your dance? At the end of the night, people, especially the girls, will leave and say, gee, this dance has felt smoother tonight. I don't know why. They don't know why. They're not callers. But it just felt smoother. And if your dance feels smoother because of these centers trade versus the other caller down the street, then maybe they're more likely to come back to your dance. Comments or observations? Yeah, we have like two minutes. Any comments? No, we go to 345. Or no, that's when the next session starts. Oh, okay. Any comments? How about a nice hand for the square? Give me a nice hand. Thank you, guys. Joe, 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 right up front. Thank you. Hey, Joe Gonzalez, from Los California. My wife always tells me, colors should dance the girls' part to find out how the girls feel being pushed and being pulled and being put all over the place. Absolutely. Yeah, they would know. Mark? Can we hand the mic to Mark over here? Great. We're about. We're just about done, Kate. Mark. Mark Fetzer. Um, the other, when you had the uh, ladies in the center, or men in the center, and the ladies on the outside, and you did the touch a quarter trade. The other advantage of doing that trade is it reminds them that they are in a wave, especially with newer dancers. If you tell them centers trade, that they they realize they're in a wave. Ed, any final comments? Uh, okay, uh, we'd like to thank everyone for coming. Again, the idea was, I showed you a quick basic two-face line method. If you're not using a method, try to learn one. Get, if you know, if you've got an experienced caller in your area, start practicing it. If you've got groups you call for, they're the best people you can, you can work, you can work with. And if you're already doing a lot of this, I know many of you out there probably are, you just start to see it. But, you know, that doesn't mean you got to get into a rut with the same get-outs you have. And watch your get-outs, so sometimes you miss one. One, one other thought, uh, if you're not using a method, Caller Lab has the write-up on facing line site, two-face line right. site, just contact the home office and you'll get that. The handout is up front on how to remember primary and secondary couples in three squares. Great, great Thank session. You for being here. Have a nice hand for folks. Thank, Thank, Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the convention. Personally, I would have had the end circulate up. Which one is it? Huh?
for to have you. My He's talking to Claire Karen.